Hi, welcome to another Language Diversity A-Level uh, video. This one we are going to be doing about lects, words that end in L-E-C-T, words like idiolect and sociolect and dialect and genderlect, things like that. Okay, and we're going to be also looking in close detail at the strange case of Cockney rhyming slang. Okay, so let's start off with some AO1 terms. So a word that has got lect on the end as a suffix means it's the language of that particular thing. So lect is a bound morpheme. I, it's a bit of a word that has to be attached to the main part of the word. It's a bound morpheme. And idiolect. So idiolect is your own personalised speech style. And linguists claim that we all have our own very special speech style that is completely unique, whether it be to do with our accent features or to do with our lexical choices or our grammatical choices. And indeed, a forensic linguist, it's their job to be looking at people's individual speech styles. And they're often brought into criminal cases, aren't they, in order to investigate the identity of people from things like their text messages. So your idiolect is your own special language style, not to be confused with socialect. So socialect is the language that's used that shows that you are a member of a particular social group. So <clears throat> these can be small scale, these can be large scale. So a social act could be, for example, uh, to do with the accents that you use because you live in the northeast of England and therefore you're showing that you are come from this area. Uh, it may be to do with a small scale group, like for example, you're in a Facebook group or a WhatsApp group and you use language that's actually quite unique to that particular group. So social act means that it shows that you are a member of a particular social group. We then have accent. Now, accent is phonological. It's to do with your pronunciation. Uh, it shows something about your geographical origin, where you come from. Uh, it may also signal things about your social identity and indicate things about your background and things like your social class as well. So as we've seen in the previous videos, uh, we're very good at assessing each other socially uh, as a result of people's accent features. OK, so accent is not to be confused with dialect because dialect is about your lexis and your grammar. So dialect is variation in words and structures associated with a particular geographical region. So to give you an, an example of the difference between accent and dialect. So are you ganin doon toon? Are you ganin doon toon? So gan there, that's your Geordie English. Uh, dialect form of the word go, and that's a dialect feature because it's actually about the word that's chosen. Okay, whereas if I said, are you going to Newcastle, as opposed to, are you going to Newcastle, or are you going to Newcastle? Have you noticed that verb there I'm saying in three different ways with three different accents? I was saying going, I was saying going, and I was saying going. Those are accent features. So don't mix up the two, the two things are, are related but different, accent and dialect. OK, and so what's interesting is um, uh, Cockney rhyming slang, which I mentioned before, is a kind of amalgam of quite a lot of these things. It's a, a very special kind of dialect that is associated with London historically. Um, because it's to do with people pronouncing words in certain ways, it has links with accents. And also you could argue that it's a bit of a social act as well, in that people who use and understand Cockney rhyming slang are a, a members of a group, a particular social group. OK, so let's do some background about Cockney rhyming slang. Is it a regional, not just a dialect, but a regional social act? at the same time. So in terms of a definition, rhyming slang is a form of slang word construction that uses rhyme. So the construction of rhyming slang involves replacing a common word with a phrase or two of more words and the last of which rhymes with the original word. So making the origin and the meaning of the phrase elusive to listeners not in the know. OK, so here's an example. Dog and bone. I was on the dog and bone with him last night. I was on the dog with him last night. Sounds a bit dodgy. Means I was on the phone with him 
last night. That's Cockney rhyming slang. Where does it come from? Well, it is believed to have originated in the early to mid 19th century in the East End of London. OK, and several sources are suggesting it's round about the 1830s and the 1840s that it first makes its appearance. Why is it? Why did it emerge? Well, people speculate maybe it's just playfulness. You know, we all use language to play games and to amuse ourselves, and maybe that's the main point behind it. So maybe it's just playful use of language in order to entertain ourselves. Uh, maybe it's a crypto act. You know, I said lect on the end of a word means language of crypto means mysterious or puzzled. So maybe it's a cryptolect that is developed intentionally to confuse non-locals to people not in the know. So it may have been used deliberately to maintain a sense of community. It actually may have been used to allow traders and criminals maybe to talk amongst themselves in marketplaces in order to facilitate collusion so that they knew what they were talking about, but excluding other people who didn't. And remember, 1830s, 1840s, that's the birth of the police, the police force, the first police force in the world. So maybe Cockney rhyming slang is a result of that. It's an intentionally coded language, which is not allowing the general public or authorities to understand what's going on. OK, here are some examples. Uh, if you're in my class there in the booklets, uh, see if you can work out what the Cockney rhyming slang words are. I need to see a doctor about my mince pies. Use your loaf. My plates are killing me. That baby's got a beautiful boat race. Don't go telling porkies. After work, we all went out for a ruby. He was in the corner all on his Jack Jones. I haven't got a Scooby. Time to get up the apples and pears. I just don't Adam and Eve it. What's she rabbit? Come inside and make the trouble and strife. Let me have a butcher's. Hello there, my old china plate. We've been going down there for donkeys. Pause the video there. What do these Cockney rhyming slang terms actually mean? Right, let's go through them. I need to see a doctor about my mince pies, about my eyes. Use your loaf, loaf of bread, head, easy brain. My plates are killing me. Uh, plates of meat, feet. That baby's got a beautiful boat race face. Don't go telling porkies. Porky pies, lies. After work, we all went out for a Ruby Murray curry. He was in the corner, all on his Jack Jones, all on his own i haven't got a scooby i haven't got a scooby do i haven't got a clue time to get up the apples and pears the stairs i just don't adam and eve it i don't believe it what is she rabbiting on about rabbit and pork talk what's she talking about come inside and meet the trouble and strife come inside and meet the wife let me have a butcher's Butcher's hook. Look, let me have a look. Hello there, my old china plate. Hello there, my old mate. We've been going down there for donkey's ears. Years. So it's interesting, isn't it, how some of these have spread beyond London. There'll be quite a few of those that perhaps you use yourself. E, porkies, for example. Lots of us say that. Uh donkey's years. So lots of Cockney rhyming slang expressions are embedded in idiomatic language that all of us use. And many of us are not aware that actually this is where it comes from. OK, now, if you've got your AQA textbook, you'll see that there are a, a couple of articles about Cockney rhyming slang on pages 151 and 153 and it's really asking the question to what extent is this still a current day phenomenon or really is cockney rhyming slang a bit of a, an anachronism has it died out is it just a, a 
kind of historical thing, which is quite interesting, but it doesn't exist anymore. Let's see what two different writers have made of it. So the first piece was printed in the Telegraph, and it starts with this headline, Londoners baffled by Cockney rhyming slang. So your opening headline there seems to suggest that most people don't really understand the Cockney rhyming slang. And let's face it, if it was designed as a cryptolect, that's probably fulfilling its purpose, therefore. And the byline goes, modern Londoners are just as baffled by Cockney rhyming slang as the rest of the country. OK, so it's, it's putting forward uh, a statement there in quite a dogmatic way. Again, it's using, remember in our previous video, we talked about the use of the verb to be and how that's used as a copular verb, i.e. if you're a writer, you can make things sound absolutely certain by using the copular verb. And so this is what this journalist here is doing. Modern Londoners are just as baffled by Cockney rhyming slang as the rest of the country. The slang is dying out among London's diverse multicultural society, new research has revealed. A study of 2000 adults, including half from the capital, found the world famous East End lingo, which has been mimicked and mocked for decades, is on the wane. OK, so the writer there is trying to show us that this is uh, bound up with evidence, that it's quite a, a large scale piece of research that's been done because 2000 participants have been asked and they're not kids, they're adults. So it's likely to be quite genuine. It's new research. And notice also the way that language is being used here to try and keep our attention so it's using the word lingo, for example, rather than the word language. It's using a little bit of alliteration here with the repetition of the M sounds there in order to make it quite memorable. The survey commissioned by the Museum of London revealed almost 80% of Londoners do not understand phrases such as donkey's ears, slang for years, which I found quite incredible. Other examples of rhyming slang which baffled participants included Mother Hubbard, which means cupboard, and bacon and eggs, which means legs. OK, so it's now giving us particular examples of rhyming slang and it's mirroring this word baffled here. This uh, mental verb here, baffled, is repeated there. So there's an element of cohesion in the writing. Significantly, Londoners own knowledge of the jargon is now almost as bad as those who live outside of the capital. OK, so that's interesting. It's saying that people who actually live in London, they are just as ignorant about Cockney rhyming slang as people who live outside of London. And notice that the journalist here uses this word here, jargon, which is highly subject specific lexis. Um, OK. Yesterday, Alex Werner, head of history collections at the Museum of London, said for many people, Cockney rhyming slang is intrinsic to the identity of London. OK, well, we've done so much work so far on this language diversity unit to know that language is very much bound up with identity, that people deliberately or perhaps unconsciously express themselves in a way that is projecting something of an identity. So that's quite an interesting quotation for many people. Cockney rhyming slang is intrinsic to the identity of London. However, this research suggests that the Cockney dialect itself may not be enjoying the same level of popularity. The origins of Cockney slang reflect the diverse immigrant community of London's East End in the 19th century. So perhaps it's no surprise that other forms of slang are taking over as the cultural influences on the city change. OK, and what's interesting there is it's showing that, you know, this dialect springs up not from a very narrow kind of community, but actually from the diversity of the community, because in the 1830s and the 1840s, there was a lot of migration in towards London, a lot of diversity in society. And this writer here, Alex Warner, is saying, well, that's the origin of Cockney slang. OK, so if you've got the uh, the AQA textbook, read the rest of that. 
And then what you need to be doing is summarizing the key points that are made about Cockney Rhyme Slam in about six to eight bullet headings. I said that there were two articles in the AQA textbook. There is another one as well. This is on page 153. It starts with the headline, Rhyming Slang, UK's Poetry of the Proletariat goes pop. So we've got characteristic alliterative devices here to make it snappy and alluring. We've got the repetition of that plosive sound, the puh. Proletariat means the working people is one of those words that uh, Karl Marx used to write about when he was talking about the conflict between the ruling classes and the working classes and he called the working classes the proletariat. Okay, so it's interesting because it's basically arguing that rhyming slang is a kind of art form. It's poetry. It's poetry and it's associated also with pop. Since the first half of the 20th century, a period when it appeared to be in danger of dying out, Cockney rhyming slang has made a stunning comeback, spreading well beyond the East End. Now, this is interesting, isn't it? Because this seems to be in direct uh, contrast to what we've just found out about you know, people being baffled by Cockney rhyming slang. This writer, and this was printed in the National Geographic magazine, so this is an American geographical uh, magazine. This is saying that actually Cockney rhyming slang has made a stunning comeback. So we've got that emotive pre-modifying adjective stunning, which gives a sense of surprise. And it's also arguing that it's not just the preserve of London, that it's actually disseminating beyond the East End. Television introduced Cockney rhyming slang to a far wider audience, thanks to an appetite for London police detective series and shows based on the fictional lives of amiable Cockney villains. The Sweeney, a 1970s TV series about hard-drinking detectives from London's Flying Squad, even took its title from the Cockney name given to this special police division. Sweeney for Sweeney Todd, meaning flying squad. Not a lot of people know that. Similarly, the TV series Minder and Only Fools and Horses helped to popularise Cockney rhyming slang throughout the country. Richard Oliver, 35, is a university-educated newspaper sub-editor born in the northeast of England, up here. He says Minder, which centred around dubious business dealings of Cockney entrepreneur Arthur Daly, inspired Oliver to broaden his own vocabulary. At first, it was like trying to interpret foreign language, Oliver said. Part of the fun was working it all out. Oliver gives a demonstration while in conversation with colleagues at his local London pub. Use your minces, he says, gesturing towards an unsuspecting drinker. That's a syrup, if ever I saw one. Minces, he says, are eyes, rhyming with mince pies, while syrup is a wig from syrup of figs. He says he even works Cockney rhyming terms into headlines he writes at work. One recent story about Titanic film star Kate Winslet's admission she has surprisingly big feet inspired the headline, Kate's size 10 plates. Oliver explained, these days most Londoners know that plates, as in plates of meat, mean feet. Born and bred a Londoner Terry Godfrey, 58, says as a youngster he never heard such phrases uttered outside the East End. He believes their usage started to spread as people became more mobile and Cockneys mixed regularly with other Londoners. Okay, so it's a slightly different slant that you've got about Cockney Rhyming Slang there. And if you look in the AQA textbook, there is an activity there. There are four questions that you're being asked to do. And I've also put them in the book on page 22. So read the full article in the textbook and then complete in note form answers to these questions. Evaluate the idea that the media has played an important role in Cockney rhyming slang's comeback. Plenty of evidence of that, if this article is to be believed. Two, the article refers to people becoming more mobile. So why do you think this could be a contributory factor? Okay, and number three, the article states that teenagers use language to give them a sense of belonging and like to get outsiders guessing as to what they're talking about. And so what are your personal views on such a claim? So 
you're a teenager yourself, do you think that's true that teenagers like to use kind of cryptolects where they're using exclusive language that you have to be a member of the particular social group in order to understand that social act? And what do you think Mike Coles was hoping to achieve in writing the Bible in Cockney? So has he done it in order to mystify and baffle people? Or is his attempt to do that actually going to disseminate it and make Cockney rhyming slang more of an understandable thing to the general populace? OK, so once you've done all of those things, then that puts you in a position where you can do a damn fine mind map like the example on there. In the centre of your mind map, put the question, evaluate the idea that Cockney rhyming slang is dying out. What do you think? Because you've got kind of competing evidence going on here. So in your mind map, include information about the, the features and the historical development of rhyming slang that you've learned. And then you need to be putting down there evidence that suggests that perhaps rhyming slang is disappearing or perhaps that it's just changing or evidence perhaps that it's resurgent and it's still popular and in fact growingly popular and you need in your mind map to come to some kind of balanced conclusion which shows that you've carefully weighed up the different bits of evidence okay so it's an interesting area to look at it's a kind of case study which as i said at the beginning amalgamates people's social act dialect accent features and sometimes people's idiolex as well. Thank you very much. In our next video, we will be looking more carefully at regional dialects across the UK.